This is my view on Google Ads competitor campaigns. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through whether you should run them or whether you should avoid them. But before we go into the pros and cons of Google Ads competitor campaigns and whether they are beneficial for your business, I firstly wanna really give some insight into why many people and many businesses are seeing an increased spend on competitors targeting their keywords. And a big driver of this is that it is actually unintentional in that the competitors that are bidding on your branded terms may not be aware that this is happening. And this is happening for two core reasons. Firstly, as you may be aware, Google has drastically changed how the keyword match types operate inside of Google Ads search campaigns. So historically, you would enter in the keywords that you wanna target, and especially if you were using the exact match keyword targeting, Google would very, very strictly target those exact match keywords which you had decided to target inside of your Google search campaign. Now Google targets the meaning of those keywords. And this is where a lot of that competitor spending comes in is because Google is assigning your brand to a product meaning. Let me give you a perfect example of this is that when Google made these changes, at that time I was doing some work for an insurance company here in Australia. We started to see a really big spike in our non-branded campaign which was targeting search terms like motorcycle insurance actually spending on competitors brand names because Google had assigned the competitor brand name as the same meaning of motorcycle insurance. Now, another reason for why the spend has also increased is because a lot of the search traffic, which is now happening inside of Google Ads, is occurring on Performance Max campaigns. And we know with Performance Max campaigns, one, Google has only just really started to make it easier to add in some negative keywords. But a lot of businesses run Performance Max campaign without brand exclusions. And if your competitor is running a Performance Max campaign without negative keywords or without brand exclusions in there, what can very, very quickly happen is that Google can move some of that spend over to your branded term. So that's the core drivers for why you may be seeing an increase in other competitors of yours targeting your branded search terms. And in many cases, they actually don't know this is happening. Now let's move to, I guess, probably the bigger, more important question is, should you actually run competitor campaigns for your business? And for me, I sit quite neutral on this. And what I mean by that is because it really does depend on your business, your niche that you're in, and then also above that, your personal views and your strategy. Now, let's firstly talk about the niche related ones. And what I mean by that is that there are just some niches or some you know keyword things that by nature, where it's super, super aggressive. And many businesses will actively target your branded keywords. And when that does occur, when you have multiple competitors specifically targeting your brand terms, it does really mean that you have to adopt both a defensive and also an aggressive strategy. And what I mean by that is that you need to run a branded campaign in order to really block off or stop them from uh, taking some more of your customers. And then many businesses in that case do decide to run a bit of an aggressive campaign and have a, a portion of their allocated budget to be for in a separate competitor campaign so that they can also target other businesses' branded keywords. So the first thing you do, we'll just wanna have a look at it, just have a look and a bit of a feel of what's happening inside of your business niche and what's happening inside of your industry. And then the second thing is it really comes down to your personal values and your strategies. When I work with some businesses, they are really, really aggressive and really wanna take over more market share. Whereas there's other businesses who just don't really wanna go down that path. And for me, that's why I'm really directed by the business that I'm working with. That's why I say I'm kind of neutral because I do see pros and cons for both of those strategies. Now, one thing I do want to stress, whether you are going to be running competitor campaigns or whether you don't want to run competitor campaigns, in order to make sure that you are really outworking the core strategy that you want to achieve with your Google Ads search campaigns, you do need to make sure that you've got your campaigns set up the right way using the right settings. And before we go further, that's why I've created this free resource, which you can download in the description below, which is my Google Ads campaign setup guide. And if you just follow that link in the description below, it takes you through the step-by-step -step process in the right way to set up a search campaign. And I do explain some of these settings so that you can really make sure that if you don't want to be targeting other competitors' brand names, that you're not doing that. Or if you do, you're doing it in the right way. As I said, we're gonna keep going with the training, but you can get that free download in the link in the description below. All right, now let's talk about the case for and the case against competitor campaigns so that you can make the decision as to whether this is the right strategy for you. And let's firstly start with the case or the reasons for why you should not be set up a competitor campaign. And the main reasons for that is that you do need to understand that with Google Ads, if you were to set up a competitor campaign, you're really, really likely to pay higher CPCs. Now, the reason for that is because because 
obviously we do know that with Google Ads, it is an auction based system, but it's not just based on how much you're willing to pay. It also goes into other factors like your keyword relevancy, the landing page relevancy back to the user's initial search and by design, you can see that if you're bidding on another competitor's brand, you're not going to have the same amount of a keyword quality score because you don't want your competitor's brand all over your landing page. So you are kind of already a little bit behind because you are going to be paying a higher CPC in order to get the same level of ranking as your competitor. Secondly, you do generally see lower conversion rates. And this is just by design because obviously if someone is searching your competitor's brand, they are a good way down the path of converting with that business or going into research about that business. So it's kind of like a last ditch attempt to try and get that conversion along the line. So you can kind of see you've really, really got to have a really, really solid campaign in order to stop that conversion and kind of divert them over to your business. Now I'm gonna talk about some strategies about that very, very soon, but there is just one last thing I do want you to think about, especially if you're in a niche or a, a local area where there isn't much competitor spending going on. And you do need to think about that if you are the first mover to to really get aggressive about these competitor style campaigns, you can kind of start, I guess, the, the wheels in motion for a bidding war to happen, which Google does want to see happen. As I said, remember, if you've got more businesses bidding on the same search terms, by design, because it is an auction, it is going to drive up those CPCs. So generally for businesses, what I would say is that if you don't see a great amount of competitor spending, I would really, really tread cautiously and really think about the longer term impacts of starting that. And what you could think about there is that rather than starting a competitor campaign, would that money be better spent in targeting non-branded keywords? So service or product related keywords, because you are more than likely going to get better results out of that play. So I guess probably the word of warning there is just to be really, really cautious that if you are the first mover to really start that aggressive trend, you can actually start creating a bidding war where the real winner in the end is Google because it's getting those higher CPCs. All right, so that's the case against competitor campaigns. Now let's talk about the case for competitor campaigns because sometimes there are some really, really valid reasons for why you would want to start a competitor campaign. And one of the main examples I give of this is that there was an e-commerce brand that I was working with for a number of years and they were the first mover in this market. So they actually created a brand new product that didn't exist before. This product was hearing protection for babies. And for the first three years, they were the only player in the space. But then what? started to happen is that people started to you know, create cheaper products and they did start to see a real dip in those conversions. So we really did need a competitor campaign to really start to reassert that we were the main player of this brand in this space. And this really brings us to a core strategy point that if you are going to see success with competitor campaigns, remember that they're already searching for that other brand. So you've really got to be really, really clear in your ad copy of the reasons for why they should be using your brand as opposed to someone else's brand. And the good thing with this scenario, which I'm explaining to you right now, is that they were the only brand that had the safety standards met because it had to do with kids hearing in both the United States and also the European markets. So that was the unique selling point that we put into the ad copy by stating that not only were they the original brand, but they are also the safest brand because they were the only ones that had met safety compliance checks in both the European and the US markets. Now, what that ad copy did is it did two things. One, it did actually convert, but it also protected their price. So they didn't have to go into a bidding war in order to, I guess, win back those competitor searches. So that is a perfect scenario where we were working with a business where they didn't start the, I guess, the competitor bidding war. But when they did enter into that game, they came in with a very, very clear, unique selling point, which allowed them to actually get really, really good conversion rates and make that competitor campaign actually profitable for their business. So as we finish up here, let me just go through some of the core rules that if you are going to start a competitor campaign, the first thing that you really want to make sure is that you are moving this into a separate campaign. Now inside of Google Ads, one of the core functions is that your budget is set at the campaign level, not your ad group level. So if you are going to do any competitor spending, I would move that out into a separate campaign. The reason for that is so that you can better control the spending. Also as well, you can also use better bidding targets or target CPAs or target ROAS if you want to use that. So that's the first rule. The second thing is that in your ad copy, you really, really need to make sure that you've got a clear, unique selling point. And if you don't have any clear differentiation between you and your competitor, it really, really is a hard sell in order to get that conversion. For competitor campaigns that we've run, it's only ever really, really worked where the business has a clear, unique selling point that is really a compelling reason for the user who searched for that other person's brand to click on your ad 
add and also complete the sale. And then the final thing you really need to think about is generally we find the landing page needs to be different to your non-branded or your branded keywords. And what you may need to include is some different comparisons, even those unique selling points going into further details about those unique selling points. Once again, thinking about the user journey, if they've clicked on your ad because you've got some information about a unique selling point, Keep in mind that that's what they need to see front and center as soon as they get onto your landing page. So the, the main take home message with these Google Ads competitor campaigns and whether they are right for you. So the main thing I'd say is just to make sure that you've got a really clear strategy on why you need to do it and that you're not just doing it because other people are doing it. You're really having a good think about it, focusing on those unique selling points, putting it into a separate campaign and also making sure that they're going to a different landing page so you can really complete that user journey. Thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And remember, if you want that step-by-step -step guide so you can set up your campaigns correctly, follow that link in the description below. And if you wanna see a video on this step-by-step -step guide as to how to set up your search campaigns the right way in 2025, go through and watch this video right here. See you next time.